Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Prosser United Methodist Church. I'm Bo Bryan, the pastor, and I uh, welcome you on this first Sunday of 2022. Happy New Year to all of you. We have a couple of announcements to go through. On our announcements page there on the schedule, you'll see we have a coffee hour after uh, the service today, and you're all welcome to join us downstairs after the service. Um, also, United Methodist Women are meeting on Wednesday at noon. Uh, they're meeting in the Fellowship Hall downstairs. And uh, you can bring a sack lunch if you'd like or uh, some sort of something to eat. And uh, we'll have a, the, the regular UMW meeting uh, down there. On Saturday, the men's group is meeting at 8 a.m. Uh, they will be meeting in the uh, friendship room. Got to get the names right of the different rooms here. Uh, the, the friendship room, as they usually do, and uh, they'll be having coffee, donuts, uh, uh, that kind of stuff to start off with, and then go about doing some uh, extra uh, work around the church. Also, it's not listed on the, uh, uh, in the bulletin there, but Saturday is also going to be our unhanging of the greens. When we take down our ornaments and, and uh, uh, greens and things like that that we've put up for the Christmas season, uh, this week is Epiphany week, and uh, following Epiphany is when our, our decorations come down. So Saturday at 10 a.m., we will be meeting here at the church to put our decorations uh, to bed for another year here, or until the end of this year now. That is all of the announcements that I have this morning, and our worship leader this morning is Donna Barr, and she will lead us through the call to worship and opening prayer and scripture readings that are printed in the bulletin there. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. You'll find it in your bulletin. Arise, shine, for your light has come. God's glory has come upon us. Even places of darkness. And all people will know that something special has happened. People near and far will be filled with joy. God's light shines through Jesus for all the world. Please join me in the opening prayer. Everlasting God, the radiance of faithful souls, you brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations through him who is the true light and the bright and morning star, even Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. The Hebrew scripture today is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. The, a multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Median and Ephah, all those of Sheba, shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The gospel reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? 
for we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, there are no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to, the she is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the home, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Will you join me for a moment of prayer? In the words of my mouth and meditations upon each of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we are in the season of light. It doesn't feel like it, does it? <laughs> But Epiphany is the season of light, uh, which we are approach approaching this week. The season of Epiphany is the season of light, uh, the seeing of the light. And, um, and uh, it's interesting that this comes at the time when we have the most darkness. Uh, physically, we have the longest nights. Uh, that's just uh, happened before Christmas. And, and we still have those long nights, although we're starting to see, kind of get a feel that maybe they're staying light a little bit later than it had been before. So this is the season of light. I talked about that a little bit in my blog for this month. But I also want to talk a little bit about light in a different way in relation to, uh, to this story. Uh, as we were listening to this story, as I was thinking about it this past week, something struck me as odd, really, in this story about, uh, from Matthew, uh, about Herod there. And that is, why does he ask the wise men to come back and tell him where to find the baby? I mean, the wise men have told him the story, that there's this star that guided them uh, over to Jerusalem there, and now that they know that it's in Bethlehem, they can, they can go there. And the star appears to them and, and guides them actually to the very place where the baby is, where Mary and Joseph and the baby are. So why doesn't Herod know about this star? Why doesn't Herod follow this star to find the baby? I mean, it's obviously something that is visible. So I thought about that question, and I thought about the concept of light, and about Herod's response to what the wise men have told him. Remember, it says that he was frightened. He was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. All, not probably not all Jerusalem, but probably all of his advisors and all of the people that were uh, in the palace with him, because Herod had a lot to lose. He didn't have a new son. So they obviously were not talking about his successor in terms of his son. And if they're talking about a new king, that would be cause for fright for Herod and all who were with him. He might be about to lose power. 
And so we get a clue that Herod really is more focused upon himself and what he might lose here and his fright, his, the, the, his fear of losing power as king of the Jews. And so I wonder if maybe it's that fear, that focus inward on himself that keeps him from being able to see the light and to be able to follow the light. For the light is really the metaphor for God. John says the light has entered into the world and the darkness has not overcome it. The light came into the darkness and the darkness could not overcome it. John's very good with metaphor in that. The darkness of our world, the darkness of ourselves even, the darkest parts of ourselves, cannot overcome the light that is in the world, the, the light that God brings into the world. But the darkness within ourselves can hide that light from ourselves. can hide that light and allow us to go on about our business, our daily business. If that's what we want to fo focus on, if that's what we choose to focus on. So the light will not enlighten everyone who does not want to be enlightened. We have to come to the light. We have to come to God with an attitude of openness in order to see God's light in our lives. That's what Herod was missing. That's why he needed the wise men to come back and tell him where the baby was. Because he was not truly open to what God was doing in our world. So we have to be open to God's light in order to really see God's light and to follow God's light in our lives. But God's light doesn't depend just on us. You know, John still says, the light enters into the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The light is around us even when we are not paying attention to it, even when we are not open to it. God is still trying to influence us every day in our lives to bring us closer in love to each other and to God. And so there are times when we may find that light, we may follow that light without even really knowing that's what we're doing. Just because that light is still around us, God's God's influence in our world is still there. God is still trying to draw us. And we can feel that drawing and maybe not know exactly what that is, but we can follow it anyways. And we do what it is that God wants us to do. We end up doing that thing that God is drawing us toward. Whether it's helping out someone who you just passed uh, by the side of the road and you stop and you go back and you help them out because you felt like this nudge inside to go do that. Or it's helping out a neighbor who's got a big project going on out in their yard or their garden or their house and you go and you offer your help because you felt this, this urging, it's like that would be the right thing to do. Not necessarily something you felt like God was pushing you to, God is asking me to do this. Although if we are open to that, we could probably say, yeah, I feel like uh, maybe that's God nudging me to, to do that. God is constantly working in all people, trying to get us all to walk in the light as Jesus walked in the light, as the first letter of John says so that we may be in fellowship, one with another. That we may be the people 
of God, doing the work of God through our lives. And so what we learn from this story is that that light is out there, that star is out there for each one of us, for every person in this world. Sometimes we see it, sometimes we just kind of feel it. We kind of have this instinct or this, this intuition, maybe, that there's something drawing me that direction. We still choose whether we're going to follow that, that intuition, that light. But when we do, we follow God's will. We follow what it is that God is asking us to do, do, and we are acting as the people of God in this world. Whether we're conscious of it or not, hopefully we become more and more conscious of it as we do more and more of that, allowing ourselves to be open to that intuition, to that nudging, to that urge, not to be focused on ourselves and our fears, like Herod was, but to be focused on others and outwardly toward God. Then we are in fellowship, one with each other and one with God. Amen. Let's join in uh Singing along softly through our masks, uh, we three kings, number 254. And let us join together in this um, affirmation of faith entitled the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, our only Son, be thou the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This time we're going to go enter into prayer and I invite you to keep in mind all of those uh, in your families, uh, wherever they may be, and uh, hopefully they have uh, not had any troubles traveling uh, during this holiday season. There's been quite a bit of that, but uh, just keep our, our friends and families uh, in, in prayer. Uh, especially this week. Let's join together in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you as your people in prayer. And we share with you the joys and the concerns that are upon our hearts in this moment of silence. Loving God, we give you thanks for this season. The season of light, the season of giving and of sharing, the season of families gathering together, keeping in contact with each other, giving gifts to each other. We give you thanks for the hills around us, for the green we see underneath the snow. For the season of rest. Lord, help us as we begin a new year to continue to seek for you, to ask ourselves what you would have us do in this year. Who you would have us be. Help us to recognize our fears in life. To embrace them, but also to set them aside so that we may live your life. The life that you have given to us. Lord, we pray for people around this world 
who are struggling, who do not have enough food to eat or water to drink or shelter from the cold. We pray for those who are displaced because of hurricanes, floods, fires, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. We pray for those who are struggling with illness and the after effects of illness. Pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, guide us, help us to see your light and to follow it. Help us to reach out to each other, to share out of our abundance to offer comfort and grace. Lord, we pray for our leaders in our towns, our states, our countries. Guide them Help them to make wise decisions for the people they serve. That they may bring, bring peace on earth. And we may be able to build goodwill toward all. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our time of communion. Uh, if you turn to page seven in the hymnal, you will find the outline of the communion liturgy that I will be reading. You don't, will not have all of the words that I will be using, but you will have the same introductions to your responses as are printed there. As always in the Methodist Church, anyone and ev everyone is, is invited to come up for communion. We will be doing communion as we had done before uh, and as we did last month, uh, since we have some obstructions on our altar rail here, uh, where uh, I will, you will come forward down the center aisle, I will hand you a piece of bread and um, Donna will be holding the chalice and you can dip the bread into the cup. Uh, we don't really have room, I could, you could maybe perhaps kneel at the altar rail there if you'd like to, but. Uh, uh, be mindful of the decorations that are there, too. Um, and uh, also, as you're coming forward, uh, please do maintain some distance uh, from others who are not in your family group. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Amen. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem, and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery, to sin and to death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you for it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you for it, gave it to his disciples and said, drink of this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body for the world, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and in ministry to all the world, until Christ come in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. These are so much fun to put on.
I invite you to stand for the benediction. Now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve our God in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.